Good morning, good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you've started the week off powerfully. Powerfully, that's the word. But um, yeah, I hope you've had a really good weekend and you've spent time with your loved ones. You've worked towards your meanings in life. You've basically just had a nice rest and recover. Because I think when we hit the weekend, we want to try and cram as much in as we, we can possibly get done. And you get to work and you feel like you haven't had a, a break. Now, there's a balance, isn't there? Between um, crap, jam packing your weekend with stuff to do. Like going on holiday, this is like, like going on any, any holiday. There's a, there's a fine balance between jam packing stuff into your week and finding your rest and recover time. Now, when I say I like to rest, like, listen, sometimes I like to just get some shitty food, lie on the settee, and literally watch junk on whatever, YouTube, on Netflix, uh, you know what I mean? Just, just junk, like, like yesterday I was watching the Donald Trump impeachment. What a farce that is, eh? Madness. Um, you've really, like I try and look at things with um, as much open-mindedness and neutrality and non-biasness as I can. I mean, obviously everybody's got bias. Uh, it's built into you, isn't it? It's very hard to be objective. But like, it's just, I don't know, um, if I was living in America, I mean, we, we've got it in this country, bloody hell. Over there, the politics that they play with each other is unreal. Um, but anyway, just go and watch it yourself. Like it's, it's horrible, horrible way of treating people and setting an example to you. These are supposed to be the guys that are in charge. <laughs> what a bad example they're showing. That oh, unreal. Anyway, let's let's forget that because uh, I'm going to talk about rule number uh, twelve. Rule number twelve is live minimally, live a minimal lifestyle. So, if people don't know, I literally gave everything up. I got to a point where I just gave it all up. I went traveling, I gave, well, obviously I gave up my, my event management business. I gave up DJing, gave it all up. Went traveling with a backpack. Um, over to Southeast Asia, so we done. So this is this was, this was my trip. I went. We, we landed in Bangkok, and then we went North Thailand. We travelled up North Thailand. We all we had was a backpack. We had our flight. We had some. We bought our flights. We bought our flight to Thailand. We bought another flight from Singapore to Australia, and then we bought a flight from Australia to New Zealand. New Zealand to Fiji, and then Fiji back, basically. that We, we pre-bought our flights for that on certain days. So we had to get to the air, the connecting airport by a certain time. And what we did in between was completely random. So we landed in Bangkok, and we traveled north through Thailand, through the jungles, um, and then we crossed over into Laos. Spent a bit of time in Lao. Done the uh, we went on the 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 tube. It was called tubing. Basically, it was a mad piss up on the uh, on on the river. You bought an inflatable ring. Well, hired an inflatable ring and just got up and you sailed down the river. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant day it was. You know what? Some of the key highlights for me. So, no, um, North Thailand. We went to we went on a jungle trek. Brilliant. That was really good. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Um, so that was am amazing. I can just remember sitting in this jungle trio thing with like with um, the the locals, this little tribe that lived up there. And um, I just remember looking over the jungle canopy because I was re writing a diary. I just looked up and I thought, man, look where I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like smoke coming up through the jungle and that it was brilliant. Um, 
Yeah, and then we went over to Lau, done the tubing. That was a, we, we we actually met up with some friends, some friends from uh, my hometown. We're travelling at the same time, so we met up with them in Lau, um, and we, our our intention was we meet them in Lau, and then we 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 travel Vietnam with them for New, uh, for Christmas and New Year. So yeah, we went to Lau, got absolutely mortaled, mortaled. When have I ever used that word? Got absolutely wrecked out our face. Um, really good day actually. It was dangerous as fuck. <laughs> you know, you, there was like all wooden platforms you could jump into the river and all that sort of stuff. Um, what's going on here? Oh, it's alright. Wooden platforms and zip lines and that. And you, you, you know, when we got to Lau, we literally saw people like on crutches walking around, you know, legs in casts, scratched up and all that. You know, what's going on here? And then we went to the, we went tubing and we understood why. Um, so that was good. And then we went over to, we went over to Vietnam, North Vietnam. I forget the name. I forget the names of the places. No, it was the main city. Um, Ho Chi Minh might have been. It was, all, it was one, one or the other. We travelled from north to south. Um, so we went to, we went, one of the key highlights for that as well. So we was with our mates then. Well, oh God, I've got to tell you the horror story. So they, they got a flight from Lao to Vietnam. When me and the missus was saving our pennies, so we decided to uh, to get to get um, a sleeper bus, and it was the most horrendous. Oh, we was on this bus for about thirty summer hours. It was horrendous. No room on there. I was literally elbow to elbow with a stranger lying in bed. And my missus was behind me lying in between two dudes like that. You know what I mean? It was it was horrendous. It was horrendous. But it's one of them, you look back and you laugh. Me and the missus had no food and we had no money. We weren't expecting it to be as harsh as it was. But this American fellow was like buying us biscuits and stuff, bless him. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was mad. It was a mad, mad journey. Um, yeah, so we went to... We, we travel. We went to Heilong Bay for Christmas. If anyone hasn't seen Heilong Bay, it's where you've got all these big stone cast, 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 casts, big rocks basically in the in the in the water. We're sailing around there. It's on Top Gear. I think Top Gear done a special there. And uh, we we chartered our own boat, and it cost us like sixty American dollars each. There was six of us, and we had this boat. We had it with a captain and a chef. That's how cheap it was over there. And they sailed us, they sailed us around on Christmas Day, I think it was. Yeah, Christmas Eve we spent in, in, in on, on on land. Christmas Day we went out, um, and the meadows dinner and everything. It was absolutely amazing. And we had this boat for about two or three nights, sailing round, and we had such a laugh. We had loads of booze on there, playing games. They took us canoeing, seeing the monkeys. It was brilliant, really nice. Um, and then we travelled southwards. And we wanted to end up in one of their main cities because they have they had a big party going on, big beach party, like street thing for, for New Year. So we ended up there, and that was a brilliant night as well. Um, so yeah, we we done that. We went to we went down uh, to Thailand, then we went to Malaysia. Malaysia was really nice. That's where the uh, temples are. Um, what's it called now? I forgot the name. I'm just, I'm just thinking off the fly and I so we went to Malaysia I don't want to be too long as well no not Malaysia what's it called Vietnam oh, I forgot the name of it Cambodia we went to Cam Cambodia and then back into Thailand we went on all the southern Thailand islands travelled downwards went into Malaysia went into Singapore um, got a flight from Singapore to Briz um, Cairns in Australia on the east coast and then we bought a um, what's it called a like a, a bus ticket and basically it was going downwards towards Sydney and you could get off and you couldn't go back up you could get off and then you get back on the bus and you have to travel south so we did that stopped off like a few places in Australia I can tell you all about this in more detail but I'm just I'm, I don't know why I've gone on this mad tangent but um, we went down there then we got a, a flight from Sydney to New Zealand we hired a camper van for a month, uh, travelled round New Zealand for a month in a camper van, and then we spent our last two weeks in Fiji, a bit of a relaxing 
big part of our journey. We just wanted to go ahead and veg out for a couple of weeks on a beach. That was beautiful as well. So there, there we go. Got a massive, I got a real bad disease. When we come back though, we got dengue fever. But when we got back, we I was like, I felt ill. And there was no sympathy, obviously. Um, and then Joe got ill. And then we went to hospital and they put us in the um, tropical diseases ward. And there was like, uh, you're showing signs of malaria or HIV. So my mum is just burst out crying. <laughs> obviously it's very worrying, but then obviously we stayed in for a bit and then they went, oh, you, you've had dengue fever. So that would be more nice, believe me. So that was it, that was eventful, but I digress. I've got five minutes left. So I'm gonna talk about being uh, living minimally. So I, I gave everything up, I sold everything. And when we was traveling, this is what I wanted to get to. We saw a bloke and he said to me, and he said to me and the missus, he went, if you want to live your life, sell your TV. So as soon as we got home, we sold it. I sold everything, sold my TV, sold my PlayStation, sold the lot like, just got rid of everything. Started from scratch. We went and sta lived, lived with um, the missus's parents where we found, found our feet. I got myself back into work and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, it was just like a bit of a reset, man. But like, you know, I thought I was cured, like from all my from all my past my past um, troubles. And you know, you slip, you quickly slip back into your old habits, and that was worrying. So then I I gave that up, and we went and went and lived in the country. Went and lived in this big old house. Well, this it was this dude. This, we went to live with this rich dude. He was renting his little like granny flat, you could call it. But he was basically in the middle of like nowhere, this guy was. His nearest neighbor was down the road. Nearest shop was a mile away, like it was one of them. You couldn't get anywhere without your car and all that sort of stuff. So went there and I just called it my, my sanctuary. Gave it all up, sold everything. And I go through this every now and again. Like I, I, I bought, like I went through a period, I bought uh, a new telly. When we moved into our house and we had the baby, new telly and, and the new PlayStation, the VR headset and you know, all the Apple stuff, iPhone, bloody watch, earbuds. You know, I went on a proper like um, binge of buying stuff basically. Bought all my studio gear um, and you know what? It got to a point, I sold all my studio gear we I bought my basics what I needed to, to make tunes and that without having all the bells and whistles and all this sort of stuff. Um, I gave away my my watch, my Apple Eye watch. I gave away the ear pods to my sister. It says give them to my, my niece for Christmas. You know, and help them out. I gave my settee to my uh, to my sister. Dining table, fucking everything. We just got rid of everything. Went and stayed in the caravan for a bit. Um, so I've done that basically just giddy it all up and just went bare bones. And I think it's good to do that every now and again, just to put things in perspective and not have to hold on, because I used to be such a hoarder, not to like clasp onto stuff. You look at things and think, oh, I want to keep that because it's memories, but you never ever get it out. You never, you know what I mean? The memories are in here. I've got, look, I've got so many photographs and stuff like that. They're, they're, they're good enough and they're all on a flash drive. They're not even photos, they're all on a, a hot, uh, hard drive and it's very rare that we get them out and look at them but they're the things that we keep and I mean trinkets and bits and bobs does nothing so we have a purge every now and again we just get rid of everything we do it two 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 or three times a year clothes everything give it to charity shops sell it whatever you know so we do that so I advise everyone to do that and you know what one of the best like I haven't gone into much about living minimal but what I am going to do is point you in the direction. There's a podcast called The Minimalists, and they've got a blog, and they've done a Netflix documentary. Go and watch them. They're really, really inspirational, and they'll give you a gist on why it's good to live minimally and to, to not be so materialistic at all. I'm not materialistic at all. I've got like one pair of, I've got two pairs of trainers, one I wear for work and one I wear for good. That's it. Like, I used to have loads of shoes and loads of coats and all that. You just don't need it. You really don't. It's just, it's all sold to you by good marketing and, you know what I mean? As long as I can make my music, I can train jiu-jitsu, I can spend time with my family and I can look after them. That's all that matters. I mean, that's what we're working towards. We're working towards paying off all the debts that we've got to eat ourselves into over the years. That's one of our top goals. And we're going to look at building our own house and we're going to get our expenses right the way there and, you know what I mean? Not being in anyone's pocket. But I've got 10 seconds left. So I'm going to leave you with this today. 
go and have a watch of the minimal minimalists and have a sort through and, and follow what they do and just see what you can get rid of but i love you loads peace and love have a good day see you later